Hi everyone. Good day to everyone here on Zoom joining us today for the experiment. And also, of course, good day to our viewers on the YouTube as well. While we're waiting for more participants to enter to the room, you might enter the Mentimedia presentation by tapping the in the gold flashes on the screen. So please join us there. So we have our first question. What are your expectations for the job fair? So you can type there. We have a first answer. It's finding about new opportunities, information, info about what an internship at an international organization involves. Yeah, that's really good one. Mm -hmm. Hoping to learn about opportunities in the forestry sector. To have fun, share about the UFRO and connect with some members with new opportunities. Yay, that's really nice. Getting to know more about forestry jobs and internships. Good one. So for those who are joining to this session, please join us on the Mentimeter using that code. And please answer our first question. Your expectations for this day, our first job fair event. to learn, get insights in job options after graduate. Understanding what skills and capacities international organizations are looking in us as interns or possible employees. Yeah, good one. Understanding different career paths that can actually make me feel complete to my on my job. Yes. Have we more answers? To network with organizations.
So our second question for you, which plenary sessions are you excited to listen to? We have the first one, green jobs in the forestry sector, or the second one, employer expectations. Oh. Okay, we have more interested people in the green jobs one, but also for the employer expectations. Hope you can enjoy both presentations. Please for those who are joining now to the session, uh, enter to the Mentimeter using the code and help us to answer these questions. Okay, here in the chat, someone is putting, we all are well know about the jobs, but don't have idea about employer expectations. So I guess you selected the second one, employer expectations. You can join to the Mentimeter on the link in the chat. So our second question is, which breakout room are you looking forward to the most? First one, the International Union of Forest Research Organization, are you from? Second one, young professionals for agricultural development. Third one, Forest Stewardship Council. Four one, Forest Europe. And five, Jolene Landscapes. Please choose what are you looking forward to the most? Okay, are you first leading? Also here in the chat box, we have answers. Jerry Landscapes, Ayufru, where is the worship council? Ayufru, Ayufru, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, are you first winning? Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on the Mentimeter. So our next question is, 
Any suggestions for regional job fairs? This is our first job, job fair and it's a global one, but we are looking forward to organize one for another regions. One is for Latin America, another for Africa. So if you have any suggestions for us, can you please write it on the Mentimeter? We have one answer, try to explore opportunities related to new technologies like biotechnology and AI. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Regional job fairs should be also be organized in Indian region also. Yeah, for Asia Pacific, we can also organize one. That would be really nice. They should focus on opportunities participants from the regions can benefit from. Yeah, that's a really good suggestion. Thank you. Even if these job fairs will be directed towards each region, don't shy away from global or international opportunities. Yeah, that's really, really good. Thank you. We might be in a position to answer after this session. Okay, yeah, maybe we can ask later. Hard to say before doing this job fair. I hope you can enjoy this one. Uh, it's good and possible companies from private sectors that will be interested in hiring IFSA members. Ooh, that sounds nice, thanks. Maybe IFSA alumni can suggest employers or join. Yeah, we are looking forward to hear from our alumni. Do we have more answers for this question? Okay, not only bring big organizations, but a lot of smaller ones, maybe even a youth researchers that will offer opportunities. Thanks for that suggestion. There should be a regional job fairs in Africa that should support the students in the research and expand the use of data science that are analytic it's it. Yes. One of our original Joffer, it's going to be about Africa. So yeah, that's that's good one. Workshops to build employability skills include all sectors, private, government, and top of NGOs. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And thank you everyone for all the suggestions for our regional job fairs. I hope at the end of this, you can also suggest more. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, well, we can start now with our job fair event. So again, good day, good morning, good afternoon, good night to everyone. Welcome to the first ever IFSA virtual job fair in collaboration with the Jodin Landscapes Initiative. I am Jasmine Lopez from International Forestry Students Association, IFSA, and I will be your host for today. Um, first of all, we would like to thank you for your participation in this event, which is the first of its kind. IFSA initiated this program to provide an avenue for forestry students around the world to network with organizations that are in forestry and related sectors. With us today are the International Union of Forest Research Organization, Young Professionals of, for Agricultural Development, Forest Europe, Forest Stewardship Council, and of course, Jordan Landscape Initiative. Not only will you be able to network, but the virtual job fair will also give everyone an opportunity to learn from the junior researcher at the European Forest Institute, FIA, Ms. Julieta Cheng, about green jobs in the forestry sector. We will also learn about employer expectations from Mr. Andre Brett, the operations manager at the International Union of Forest Research Organization. So if you are excited for today's job fair, please show us how excited you are by reacting with the heart emoji in the reactions tools here on Zoom. Yeah, that's a lot of hearts. <laughs> 
Thank you. I hope you can enjoy this a lot. Okay, so before we begin with the program, we would like to remind you again uh, of the following house rules. So first of all, kindly mute yourselves for the entirety of the event. Uh, so the insurities or some administrators will be automatic automatically muting attendees. And please take note that after our discussions the, uh, for the question and answer portion, you can send your questions through the chat box. Uh, there our speakers can answer. You can also um, opt to use the raise hand function to personally ask questions if we have time for it. Or you can also ask questions only after the host acknowledges you. Uh, in case of internet connectivity issues, kindly take note of the Zoom credentials so that you may rejoin your conference. And please keep in mind that this webinar is being recorded for documentation purposes, so an appropriate behavior for the entire event is kindly requested. And lastly, if you are having any technical difficulties or issues that, will, uh, that we should address, you might message any other organizers. And if your data or internet connection restricts you from joining again in our Zoom meeting, uh, you can also watch the whole session in our YouTube channel. So uh, now without further ado, uh, let us welcome to, pres to the president of the International Forestry Students Association, IFSA, Magdalena Jovanovich. Hi, can you see me? Mm. Yes. Cool. Um, well, my name is Magdalena Ivanovic. I'm the president of the International Forestry Student Students Association. And unfortunately, I could not um, make this really cool IFSA job fair background work. Uh, so I have this little daisy uh, to uh, show my support, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't have the background. Um, I would like to welcome you to IFSA's first ever global job fair. And on behalf of IFSA, I would like to thank all of the organizations that are presenting today. I would like to thank the speakers, the moderators, and of course, everyone who is participating. And also really thank everyone who was involved in organizing this amazing event and starting this initiative, which I really think will be beneficial to, to all of us. Um, we as IFSA, we put a lot of em emphasis on education and employment opportunities. And with this job fair, we, uh, we are really trying to contribute to that mission. Um, I hope that you will have a very, I hope this will be a very useful opportunity for all of you and that it will contribute to your future careers. So have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Magdalena, for your warm welcome to our participants and as well as our participant organizations. So let's us begin with the virtual job fair by introducing our speaker for the first plenary session titled Green Job in the Forestry Sector. So she has been working as a junior researcher at the European Forest Institute, FIA, in the Global Students Networking and Green Jobs in the Forest Sector project, which is a collaboration by the FIA, IUFRO, and IFSA. She is the lead author of the recently published technical report, Trends in Forest-Related Employment and Tertiary Education in Sites and Key Selected Countries Around the Globe. She is currently the head of the International Tropical Timber Organization, ITTO, Subcommission. In 2019-2021, she was the deputy coordinator for the Joint International Union of Forest Research Organization, IUFRO, IFSA Task Force on Forest Education. She has been a keynote speaker, chair, and session organizer at many international conferences and events like the International Conference of Forest Education by the FAO, among many others. She also holds a master's degree in tropical and international forestry from George August Universitat Göttingen, Germany, and a bachelor's degree in agroforestry and rural development from Moy University, Kenya. Without further ado, let us welcome Ms. Julieta Chien. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for the kind introduction. And thank you to the organizers of the job fair. This is really a brilliant idea. And I'm so happy that you were able to pull this together. 
I also would like to thank all of you for the opportunity you've given to me to be a speaker in this event. I really appreciate and I'm happy that all of you are interested in learning a thing or two about green jobs in the forest sector. So that's really encouraging. And before we dive into my presentation, I would like us to do a small Mentimeter task. And uh, I will already start sharing my screen. So you should let me know if you can see it. Just give me a second. So can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. So I want us to start with this challenge so that we can gauge our level of understanding of green jobs in the forest sector. So I hope that in uh, 30 seconds time we will be done. Here is the link to the Mentimeter challenge. So just click on it and uh, the code is 480589. So I will also copy the code into the chat and uh, just let us know what your level of understanding of green jobs in the forest sector is. Oh, thanks Elvis, you beat me into it. Okay, good. I hope you're not already tired of uh, Mentimeter because uh, you've already done a couple before mine. So I hope you're not tired. Then I need to go to the results and see how everyone is doing. So just a moment. Today I'm really multitasking. Good. And then let's see the results. Stop sharing. You're muted, Juliet. Oh my God, was I muted? Uh, you were muted after sharing the screen. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, so I was saying that from my results, I can see that 50% of the participants have moderate knowledge about green jobs in the forest sector, and then 39% have very little to little. So actually, that's why we are here to provide you with knowledge about this topic. So thank you so much for participating in the poll and now I will go back to sharing my screen. So just bear with me today. I'm really multitasking. I can't believe that I can manage to do all this. Okay, now we are back, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes, so I'm um, from the EFI IFSA IU for Global Student Networking and Green Jobs in the Forest Sector. And uh, I've been working there since 2018 up to now. And uh, the aims of this presentation are actually to provide some insights into green jobs in the forest sector. And uh, I'm also supposed to highlight how green jobs differ from the other forest jobs. So this was actually the request of the organizers. And I'm also supposed to highlight skills needed for green jobs. And we will conclude this presentation. So we've already done the Mentimeter poll. Thank you so much. So in uh, 2020, we did a survey with uh, graduates in forest related programs and uh, students as well. And we asked them about their knowledge of green jobs in general. And you can see that, now we're good. Yeah, you can see that 50% of the respondents said that they have heard about green jobs in general, and 50% said that they haven't heard about it. So out of the 50% that have heard about green jobs, we asked them if they've heard of green jobs in uh, relation to forestry. And 77% uh, of them said yes. 
77% of them said yes. So we proceeded to ask them how sufficient their knowledge on green jobs were. And uh, you see that the responses range between rather insufficient to rather sufficient. So this is actually what our small poll has also revealed to us a short while ago. So I will define what green jobs are. And according to ILO and uh, CEDEFOP, these are jobs that reduce the impact on environment by enterprises and economic sectors to levels that are sustainable. It covers work in different sectors. So this could be agriculture, it could be industry, it could be services and administration, but the end goal is that they preserve or restore the quality of the environment while also meeting the criteria for decent work. So by decent work, we mean adequate wages, we mean safe working conditions, we mean workers' rights, social dialogue, and social protection. So the end goal of these jobs are actually to help in mitigation and adaptation to climate change. What you need to understand is that these definitions are working definitions. So it means that every job can become greener if they are able to meet the indicators that I've stated before. And uh, because they're working definitions, maybe what is con considered a green job today might not be regarded so in the future. So maybe the indicators will change. Maybe more indicators will come up, etc., etc. And uh, the other question that most people usually ask, them, ask themselves is, are all jobs in the forest sector green? So you should also ask yourself that, are all jobs in the forest sector green based on the indicators I've provided there? And uh, the answer is, so we actually even did, um, as part of the survey, we asked the students this same question. And you can see that the responses range between no and yes. So these three bars that you can see here. But the truth of the matter is not all jobs in the forest sector are green. So according to the UNEC FAO team of specialists, they defined green jobs in the forest sector as jobs that contribute to the principles of sustainable forest management, as well as green economy. And they are involved in the manufacture of forest products and or in the performance of forest services. So forest services, we mean environmental or ecosystem services. But Forest Europe is also working on this definition. And we are hoping that in the near future, we will have something to guide us in the sector. Because I think these are the two, like the one by the, UNEC FAO team of specialists is among the few definitions that that cover the forest sector. So the other definitions that we have are for green jobs in. Are you ready to go to the next We are hoping that the Forest Europe definition will help us in the forest sector as well. So after that is all said and done, then we go to the next question. How do green jobs differ from other forest jobs? Now that we've said they are, diff they are different. So it's usually not very easy to distinguish them, but aside from all these factors that are provided above here, I think the most distinguishing factor is the decency of these jobs. So do the jobs provide adequate wages? Do they provide safe conditions? Do they really look at workers' rights, offer opportunities for social dialogue and uh, social protection? So this is usually the biggest distinguishing factor, but also minimizing wastage and uh, pollution, that is also very important. And uh, of course, reducing the environmental impact of an economic activity. So that's also very important. So sustainability of the enterprises and the economies. And I know the question that most of you have in your minds at the moment is where 
can we find green jobs in the forest sector? So again, the team of specialists, the UNECFAO team of specialists came up with seven thematic areas and uh, 19 fields of activities which are creating green jobs and which can create green jobs in the future. So this is what this diagram represents. So these are the seven thematic areas that they were able to come up with. And if you look at the circles now, joining all these seven circles, you can see that there's a smaller one, this one. Oh my God, okay. Back to the previous slide. Okay, so this one in the middle, this one at the center. So this refers to the traditional jobs that are in this thematic areas. And then the next circle refers to the newly established green forest jobs. And the outer circle shows the future green forest jobs. So from this diagram, you can see that there will be more jobs in the future compared to the traditional jobs that we have in the forest sector at the moment. And uh, the same team also identified potential jobs that could be created in the forest sector, potential green jobs, and uh, still based on the thematic areas that they came up with. So they identified a couple of them. And uh, what I did, because you will already receive this presentation after the webinar. So I will not read everything. And I just want to show you the new opportunities that will be coming up. So for example, for the thematic area on social and urban development, you see that in the near future, we will be having forest historians, we will be having forest culture interpreters, we will be having funeral forest managers, urban foresters, adventure park foresters. So these are new opportunities that are expected to come up in these thematic areas. And if you continue further, you can see that in health and recreation as well, we will have new opportunities, for example, the ecotherapy guide, as well as the interpretative guide. And in education and research, we will also have new opportunities. So we will have a forest pedagogue. This is a teacher teaching in the for teaching students in the forest. And then we will also have civil science facilitator. And uh, I'm combining information from diverse sources so that you will be able to get a clearer picture of uh, green jobs in the sector. Because initially I was approached to tailor my presentation to the report that we published, but I didn't feel like that was really adequate enough. That's why I went to look for other sources so that you can learn a thing or two. And uh, as I was going through the internet looking for materials, I came across the Global Green Skills Report of 2022 by LinkedIn. And uh, they identified some fastest growing green jobs and greening jobs globally. So the, in their report, they found out that the green, that green jobs and greening jobs are growing at a rate of 5% to 50%. So that's really impressive. It, it's, it shows that green jobs are really being embraced and uh, it's something for the future. So from uh, this figure that I have here, this diagram, I hope you can see it because this is a screenshot. So the ones that are dark green, these are the new jobs that are coming up. And you can see that of the new jobs that are emerging, sustainability manager is the one that's having like, there are many jobs around this sustainability management. So that's why the circle is big. And then we also have environmental health safety specialist. So this is also growing very fast. So the sustainability management grows at a rate of 50%. So there was an increase between 2020 and 2021 of 50% in this kind of jobs. And then we also have others, for example, the wind turbine technician. So this is also growing, but slowly. Then we have solar consultant. This is also growing, but slowly. We have ecologists, yeah, also growing, but slowly. And uh, now I will move to the case studies. And these case studies are based on the report that we published last year in October and uh, 
it's an output from our project. So it's actually an output from the workshop we had with experts in 2019 on forest related employment, green jobs and forest education. So we are highlighting these topics from these seven countries. And uh, the report was written by seven junior experts and some of them were IFSA members and uh, seven senior experts from uh, the seven countries and we also had three additional senior experts contributing to the report and in addition to the project team. So the first country that we focused on was Brazil and uh, in Brazil the forest sector accounts for 30 percent of the world's tropical forests and uh, they, uh, they also have huge areas of uh, forest plantations. So for green jobs opportunities in Brazil you can find them in environmental conservation, you can find them in certification, you can find them in bioeconomy and uh, forest and land restoration as well as uh, payment for ecosystem services. So I will share the link to this report so that you can read in detail what these opportunities are about. And the second country that we focused on was China. And uh, China's forest area was 220 million hectares in 2019. And uh, their, in 2018, their plantations were the highest globally. And uh, they also have green jobs in uh, the forest sector and uh, mostly in afforestation, so silviculture and uh, forest management. And this is because of the logging ban that was introduced by the government more than 10 years ago. So, and uh, when they introduced the logging ban, they introduced a very ambitious afforestation program. So they are planting trees very, very much and these are creating a lot of opportunities. And uh, we also have ecosystem services such as forest related tourism, as well as bioenergy. And the third country we focused on was Finland. And uh, in Finland, you can find green jobs in uh, the industries producing uh, wood materials for wooden buildings constructions, as well as materials for packaging, materials for wood-based textile fibers, biofuels, bioethanol, as well as nature tourism and recreation. The fourth country that we highlighted on in the report is Germany. And uh, Germany has 11.4 million hectares of forests and 48% of the forests are private owned. And um, you can find green jobs in Germany in nature education. So in Germany, we have a lot of forest kindergartens, over 1,500 of them, and they are growing by the day. Then you can also find uh, green jobs in nature event management, as well as harvesting, reforestation, and regeneration. So one of the challenges we've been dealing with here is the bark beetles infestations as well as the windstorms. So we need people to help replanting the trees that were damaged during the process. So that's why you see the reforestation and regeneration provides some opportunities for green jobs. And uh, the fifth country we focused on was Indonesia. And uh, in Indonesia, 120.6 million hectares are state-owned forests. And um, you can find green jobs in forest industries. You can find them in forest ecosystem management. You can find them in community-based forest management as well as ecotourism. And uh, the sixth country is South Africa. So South Africa has an approximately 40 million hectares of natural forests, and they also have commercial plantations. And in South Africa, you can find green jobs in clean manufacturing, control of invasive alien species, tourism in plantation forests, and uh, yeah, control of species like pine, eucalyptus, and acacia. And the last country we focused on was the USA. And the uh, US has 305 million hectares of forest land. And uh, if you convert this to the global forest area, it, it's like 
of the world's forests. So that's a lot. And the good thing is that they provide green job opportunities. So there's forest recreation activities, there's the forest biomaterial as well as bioenergy, forests and human health, risk management and compliance, among many other things. So what you need to know about this report and these case studies is that they are really not exhaustive. So there could be many initiatives that we left out. And you should also remember that it was, the data was collected in 2019. So a lot could have changed between 2019 and now. I'm sure a lot has happened and uh, that information is missing from our report. And uh, you also need to know that the green job opportunities in one country might, might not be the same in another country. So they differ. And uh, you also need to know that some green jobs are really not labeled explicitly as green jobs. So it's up to you to look at the job and then ask yourself, does it meet the criteria for green jobs? And then if it's yes, then you can call it a green job, but some are really not defined as green. And uh, so like if you have any idea of green jobs in your countries that were not focused in the report, please feel free to share with us in the chat and we will be so happy to learn about them. And uh, you can also ask in the breakout rooms, you can ask the employers which green job opportunities they do have in their organizations. So don't forget to do that. And now I move to the third part of my presentation and it's about the skills needed for green jobs. And in the same survey that we did in 2020, we asked the students how they felt about the university education. So does it really prepare them for the green jobs market? And uh, the responses were ranging between neither sufficient nor insufficient or rather sufficient. So this means that there's still a long way to go and uh, most students need more skills. And uh, I found a paper that defined the areas where skills speciali specialization could take place for green jobs, that is. So, we need skills covering technical knowledge in a particular field. And in this case, it's forestry. So we need to understand the regulations. So do you know the biodiversity strategy? Do you know the green deal about the green deal? So do you know these things? It's important to know those. So that, you know, that's what provides information about green jobs. And then we also need to understand resource efficient production processes and it's just a general environmental awareness. And then the other area we need to improve on is understanding on environmental friendly tools and machineries. And we also need to create an understanding about sustainable or burned materials and how they're produced and handled. And lastly, we need to provide, we need skills in uh, production of green and environmentally friendly goods and services. So this is according to the International Standard Classification of Occupations 2008. So this is like this classification that they've provided or this conceptual areas, they are for green jobs in general. So, but they're still applicable to the forest sector. And that's why I felt it was worth sharing in my presentation. And, uh, I, in the same report that was prepared by LinkedIn, so they were looking at the skills intensity per sector. I don't know if you can see this graph clearly, but the area I've highlighted in red is agriculture. So this is where we belong. You know, most of the time forestry is classified under agriculture. And you can see from this diagram that I have here, this figure that manufacturing energy and mining are the top three sectors that use the highest number of green jobs across the globe. But also agriculture is past the 50% mark. So the line, you, the black line you see here is 50% mark. 
so the intensity for our sector is moderately high. And um, so I also went ahead to look for skills that are demanded, green skills by employers. And I found this information from the re same report by LinkedIn. I don't know if you are able to read it, but I can briefly go through it. So the skills that were needed mostly in 2021 were sustainability, remediation, climate, renewable energy, environmental awareness, health and safety, solar energy, recycling, and um, as well as corporate social responsibility. We, all, we also had ISO 14001, we had sustainable design, we had sustainable development. So in summary, we really need skills. We need to understand the, how the forest sector is uh, contributing to the SDGs, for example, because that's part of sustainable development. We need to be aware of the legislation in place. So those skills will really be helpful because they will continue to shape how green jobs will be, what type of green jobs we will have in the sector. We also need to understand the forest policies, the different strategies. And uh, for me, what I also find very important is entrepreneurship skills. Because now with green jobs, I think there are many opportunities for young people to establish startups, you know, startups in recycling, startups in many other things, renewable energy. These are the kind of things that you can do. So it's important if you equip yourself with entrepreneurship skills as well. And I've talked to a couple of experts from, for example, Brazil during a different exercise. And they were saying that the graduates, forest related graduates from there, they are really focusing on startups. They are doing a lot of startups in Brazil. And uh, I think this will spread to other countries as well. So that's why I said it's important to have the entrepreneurship skills. And then the same report went ahead and highlighted the skills that are growing very fast. So they did this survey. So this is according to the data from 2016 to 2021. And uh, you see that sustainable fashion is growing really quick. You, it was, the growth rate was 90.6% in 2021. And uh, environmental services is also growing very fast. And then we have climate, which is growing also moderately fast. We have sustainable growth. We have, um, Sustainable landscapes, which grew at 52.9%, and as well as sustainable business strategies, 56.6%. But of course, if you now come closer to the forest sector, the skills might be slightly different, but I think this one still apply to our sector as well. And uh, because of this, so, Lifelong learning is going to be very important because there are skills that we will we will need new skills, you know. So lifelong learning will pro provide us an opportunity to do that. And uh, to my next slide, so still on the issue of skills required for employment, I decided to throw in something as a way of providing background information for the next session, which is coming up. And I'm really looking forward to it actually. So we did an, we did interviews with forest related employers last year, and some of you helped in the exercise and you did a great job. And the results of the interviews show that employers are really looking for creativity in uh, graduates. So creativity is a very important skill that employers really want out of you when they, when they want to employ you. And then the other interesting outcome of the, of the interviews were that employers are more satisfied with the, the graduate's level of preparedness for subject specific skills compared to generic skills. So there's still a long way to go. This, this finding has been in so many studies and I was hoping that maybe our study will be different, but it looks like graduates are still not 100% prepared 
for generic skills. And I think activities like this, in addition to providing you with information, for example, about green jobs, also enable you or provide an opportunity for you to improve on your generic skills. So this is something that you should keep up and do more. And it was actually nice to see great ideas, brilliant ideas being proposed for regional job fairs and future job fairs. So please take part, be active in this uh, kind of things because they really help you develop your generic skills. And uh, internships and traineeships are also very important and uh, they provide you with the skills that you need for employment. And the employers we interviewed, they said that they usually consider, majority of them consider your experience because it really speaks a lot about your previous experience you've had about from your traineeships, you know? So it speaks a lot about you. It shows that you are an active student and uh, you are active and you are also someone who understands, you know, how things work in a formal place or in a workplace. So don't shy away from these opportunities. And in conclusion, what I can say is that there's still a lot and there's still a long way to go. So the transition to green economy is actually a slow process and uh, it will take time. So it's not something that you will wake up tomorrow and realize that we've all moved to green jobs. You know, it takes time, but you can continue keeping yourself informed about what is happening in the sector and uh, in terms of green jobs. And one of the ways is to follow the Forest Europe Grow Green Jobs campaign. So the link will be shared in the chat and so far they've collected over 50 videos from 19 countries and they're showcasing different green jobs in uh, different parts of the world so by young people so young people share experiences of what they are doing and uh, what is considered green job so it's really interesting and uh, if you have something to share with them please send your video to them and they will be more than glad to share it online and then you can also continue following our research at efi so we do a lot of research, not necessarily on green jobs, but for example, on uh, sustainable wooden products, as well as ecosystem services. So you will learn a lot and then also continue checking our UFRO's website. So the working divisions and the task forces, they also do this kind of research and you will be very informed about the opportunities that are there in different places. And last but not least, on 7th of April, we have a final event for the project that I'm working for and I've been working for. So we want to disseminate the outputs from the project that started in 2018. And uh, we want to just show you what we've been doing and how we've contributed to this topic of forest related employment, green jobs, as well as forest education. So the registration link is here, but I will share it in the chat. And I hope that all of you will be able to attend the event. So thank you so much for your time. And I'm looking forward to the questions and the discussions as well. Thank you, Ms. Juliet, for such a comprehensive presentation. Uh, for audience, if you have any doubts, please write it on the chat box. Ms. Juliet can answer them there. Unfortunately, due to the time constraint, we cannot answer them now. But again, uh, thank you very much, Juliet, for your insightful presentation about green jobs in the forestry sector. And it's a pleasure to have you as a speaker in the first ever IFSA virtual job fair. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's proceed with the second plenary session titled Employer Expectations. Our next speaker is the Operations Manager at the International Union of Forest Research Organizations, IUFRO, located in the headquarters in Vienna, Austria. As an Estonian, uh, Estonian national, he holds a Master of Science in Forest Management from the Estonian University of Leicester in 2014. 
Prior to the current position, he was the project manager of IUFRO Global Forest Expert Panels, the FAP uh, initiative uh, from January 2016 to October 2020. He started his international career in autumn 2014 as the second holder of the IUFRO IFSA joint position based at IUFRO headquarters. During his studies, he was actively involved in the university's council, student union, and the Estonian Forestry Students Association. He was also the project manager for the IFSA's Northern European Regional Meeting, NERM 2013, and the organizer of the IFSS 2019 alumni program. Held on the sidelines of the 47th International Forestry Student Symposium, IFSS 2019 in Estonia. Without further ado, let's us welcome Mr. Andrew Puret. Yes. Hello. Hello to everybody here, all the IFSA students, and also thank you to the organizers for, uh, for inviting me here to this first ever uh, IFSA Global Job Fair virtually. Uh, maybe in some way it will be also physical, uh, side by side with some other bigger event. Uh, yes, uh, thank you again, as I said, and uh, thank you to Juliet for this excellent presentation on the, on the green jobs, uh, which actually uh, lays the ground for my presentation uh, very well. I have to say that I don't have so much data uh, and the numbers in it as Juliet had, but I hope to give you a different uh, perspective. And, uh, and I will start in a, in a second. So just a second. Um, yes. Do you see the full screen or do you see the presenter view? The full screen. No, the full screen, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So the employer's expectations. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I, I work in UFRO uh, and, and have some experience uh, with this, but of course I cannot uh, talk on behalf of all the international organizations. And uh, today I, uh, I would like to have a journey through the lens uh, of employer expectations versus student preparedness uh, based on my, my, own, uh, my own past and my own experience. And uh, there are four, four big topics I want to concentrate on. Uh, one of them is the generic versus subject related skills then the importance of the academic achievements, then the changing needs and perceptions of employers in the job market. What has changed in the past 10 years? What is in the future coming? And also the importance of trainings, internships and, uh, and mentoring. So, firstly, I want to mention that uh, I have to make a disclaimer because I was invited here uh, Partly, I guess, also for my youth relation, but also uh, on a private basis. And the presentations and views are really my views and my experience, including observations in the youth for work so far. And naturally, I cannot speak on behalf of the whole international community or on behalf of youth as an organization. And uh, as I am based in Europe, of course, my views are very different to the other end of the world, many of you where you are from. About myself, uh, as, as already was um, introduced about me, I'm uh, originally from Estonia. Uh, I studied a bachelor and master's both in Estonia about forest management, graduated in June 2014, so eight years ago. Uh, at the same year, I also started an international job in UFRO in November. Uh, if you don't know about UFRO, I will very briefly mention that we are a global nonprofit uh, NGO uh, scientific organization. And we have a very long history. This year is 130 years of UPRO. So it's uh, actually one of the oldest scientific networks in the world. And what we do is that uh, we offer a platform for the scientists uh, worldwide to collaborate on very specific research topics. We have many divisions, task forces, hundreds of research units from small to big, and many special programs and projects. And uh, my colleague, Chinese Burns, will uh, inform you more about this in the, in the breakout room about UFRO. Uh, our headquarters is very small in Vienna. We are only 15 staff members and from eight countries. When, when we started, uh, when I started, uh, yeah, okay. When I started in 2014, we had uh, 
only two countries represented. Now we have eight. We have made a quite good progress in the headquarters. And uh, what UFO does is that we unite uh, thousands, more than 15,000 scientists in our member organizations in 125 countries. Uh, and, and average, uh, we have a 70 meetings that carry UFO logo in every year. So I started in UFRO right after my studies in this IFSA UFRO joint position, which doesn't exist in that format anymore. Uh, but it was uh, the first kind of a position that, that IFSA could officially get somebody work on IFSA matters and administrative tasks, and UFRO would pay for that. And the other side of the work would be that I would see inside the UFRO and the organization and also get to travel uh, in UFRO meetings and, and, and other 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 benefits there so it was really a, a interesting uh, initiative and and it it was about four three four years that this existed in in uh, in ufro and i was the first ho second holder of that position uh, after two years i i was moving a little bit inside ufro and and was working more with scientists uh, globally in this global forest expert panels uh, this is an initiative that ufro leads uh, in so-called collaborative partnership on forests. And this partnership here is consisting of 15 organizations who have some forest-related programs. So C4, FAO, World Bank, UNEP, uh, IUCN, and UFRO, and others. And we are leading this work and trying to bring the science evidence on specific topics to the policymakers. So we, we uh, choose a topic, we select the best scientists in the world, and then uh, produce a report that is then launched at like UN Forum on Forest or one of the convention sessions of the CBD or Climate Cop or UNCCD, for example. And since last year, I am a youth operations manager, meaning that I'm more looking at the internal uh, internal uh, things and operations in UFRO. So not much, not much working with the scientists anymore, but trying to uh, develop the uh, organization and, and uh, keep an eye on, on everything. So before beginning of the studies, uh, many students like you, you are often need to at first answer the following two questions. First is about which field do I see myself in the future? And do I want to work locally or internationally? And then what follows that you choose and take necessary steps towards it. Obviously, you have uh, taken these steps and, and decided already because you are um, in a forest-related field, I assume, and also work uh, want to work internationally, uh, also because you joined IPSA. Uh, that already shows something. It could be that sometimes you have to rethink and choose again, as was, was the case for me, because uh, initially I didn't plan to study forest at all. I was... Uh, expecting to study marketing and, and go to different fields totally, even went to sell books door to door in America and did many crazy stuff before, and then decided that maybe I should do something uh, for nature. -related. And then um, chose forestry. So people end up in forestry different ways, and it's not always the first choice. Uh, first is the generic versus subject related skills. And I would like to here take myself as a case study uh, because uh, I have no, no real data to, to, to tell you, but I have some experience. And of course, I have seen from the side how these this processes work. And also, I'm very interested in education, forest education, from my study starts. So I have put together a few, few thoughts. Uh, in general, as also was actually confirmed by Juliet, is that universities seem to offer quite a a good level of forest with higher education skills. And this is crucial for the professional work life. Uh, what is not so much uh, taught and what also is, is, uh, was coming through Juliet's presentation is that of course the forest education itself is not so interdisciplinary sometimes. But for example, to have breakthroughs, you need to have, uh, for example, biotechnology cannot be done only in forest, you need biology the AI or digital smart products, you need to have IT, uh, biofuel, same way. You have, to, you have to look into other sectors first and then bring the forestry knowledge there or vice versa. So this, this is probably needed even more in our studies uh, and your studies. International aspects of forestry, uh, 
are missing very often, including policy level insights. And as Juliet mentioned, the uh, environmental regulations, uh, different, different views to have very broad view of the sector. And this is not uh, often in the curriculum. In my curriculum eight years ago, for example, I didn't get so much international experience and only like uh, master's degrees, which are targeted to international degrees and students, those included those aspects. Uh, another forest related skill that seems to be miss it, missing or, or what actually, what I want to say is that what the studies should do is that they should make students aware of the interconnectedness and help to analyze and think in systems. And this is not sufficiently done. They cannot teach you everything, uh, facts only, and then you take the facts and you to work life and do it. You need to have connections. You need to know why something could be relevant for something else. And, and these connections uh, are very important. And in the end, the education systems are changing and adapting very slowly. The world and the work environment is always faster. So in a way, the education always lags behind the real life. And you can uh, change something in education system. It takes five to year, years to test it. Then there's a new degree maybe in place in 10 years, but then there's different jobs. There's green jobs, different types of needs. And then that's not anymore so relevant. So this is one thing I, I have also observed about the generic skills, uh, such, such as social, interpersonal skills, flexibility, adaptability, networking, team orientation, intercultural skills. I think these are at the core of any organization. And these are crucial work-life skills, but do you get them from the studies? That's another question. Uh, as, as Juliet mentioned as well, this critical thinking, problem solving, communication, public speaking, uh, digital skills, it would be needed to have more of those in for us curriculum, in my view, and I guess in many others view. So how to get those skills is the question uh, as, as you, as a student, how do you reach this? Uh, this, in my view, and <clears throat> based on experience so far, the good basic subject subject related skills, the four skills are crucial, but the generic skills are being more and more valued by employers, even more than before. So, in this uh, weight, I would even think in some point the generic skills may play a bigger role than the basic four related skills uh, in in future job looking. Um, yes, so this was about the skills. Another point to discuss today is whether the academic achievements, uh, the 4.0 GPA, high grades, do these matter at all? In my view, and based on experience, as I just said, the good basic forest rate skills are crucial. This has to be the basis of everything. So in a way, you do have to excel in the forest skills. But all the other things are what you need to uh, study in advance. Uh, it, um, you need to study in addition and get those, if not from university, then from somewhere else. Uh, in importance of the high grades, of course, on CV, they are asset. It shows that you are dedicated, you are able to learn. And sometimes it's very uh, decisive factor when the competition is very high. If you have 100 applications, for example, for a position, then uh, you will select those with higher grades more likely, I think, at least for the filtering, first filtering. Um, very often, another aspect is that employers complain that the curriculum doesn't uh, provide all the skills needed. And this, uh, as I understand, is a, is a, well, maybe 10, 20, 30 year old problem. It hasn't changed. And, and very often, these practical skills are mentioned that uh, this is a weakness, that the university doesn't have as much practical skills uh, taught for a student as it should be. Uh, so why I want to turn to extracurricular activities, because beyond the normal uh, grades, of course, many employers seem to increasingly value more activities that you do during your studies, which are not about the studies themselves. Uh, it shows that you're willing to learn and you have a diversity of skills and you can get from the other activities, maybe even those skills that are needed in forestry, but are not being taught in the university. And additionally, I think if you have different achievements and awards in CV, this of course always makes difference and our advantage. So if you have them, I always suggest to put them on the CV, whatever kind of awards you have had. 
I now throw back myself a little bit and you to the start of my, uh, my, my studies also to show some pictures. This is the Estonia Forestry Students Association. And as uh, was mentioned, uh, I, I was a uh, part of the organizing team for NERM, the Northern European Regional Meeting. So this was one of the side, side activities of my studies. And first NERM, I actually, at the first IFSA meeting, I went to 2012 in Wageningen in Netherlands, which was very nice. And I got many friends from there. Contacts are very important, especially from IFSA. My first IFSS was in British Columbia, Canada in 2014, which was also a very uh, eye-opening. Then we had many competitions in uh, Europe, in forest versatility, in Brno. I was there four years. We tried to get a good position, and finally we got the third, which was somehow success <laughs> in my in my in my this kind of um, uh, career. And besides that, I was part of the student union. I was the vice president. I was part of the big university council as one of the students also in my institute. So I try to do all this, but also maintain a good high academic uh, average. And somehow it was managed. And I didn't even extend studies, somehow. <laughs> even I was, I was thinking this will happen anyway. Also art and design group, for example, totally different to the forest. So I just want to show you that I think it's important that uh, you can have many activities and studies and they don't always have to be the the subject related, uh, because they will give you the skills that you need later on, and you will later understand how to use them. So now about the changing needs and perceptions of employers. For us, the related sector is changing. I think that's the biggest change uh, in, 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 the, in the last years and in the future. But for us, it's expanded. It includes more social aspects, like livelihoods, urban forestry, uh, recreational aspects, so the demand for uh, societal demands to forest is increasing. And also I think this, uh, this, this changes the needs of the future workforce. Uh, working in forest related fields also assumes that you have a broader picture, including about other sectors. You cannot anymore just talk about forest. You need to see the landscape. You need to see the agriculture, whatever, even fishery. And the trend I see is that more foresters actually work by training foresters are being employed. So that's a good news for all of you. Um, another idea and, and thought I have that diversity in organizations has increased in my view over these last eight years I have seen as I, as I was the UFRO case, case, the staff is often more international before, also more youth get access. So this is a trend that many of the older so to say, uh, project the leaders and managers, they are retiring and it gives space for the new ones, the youth, for us, for you. Uh, and what is very important in my view is that the bachelor degree has become the new normality. It used to be that everybody had in Europe the 12th grade of school. Now it seems everybody has bachelor's degree. And if you want to stand out, you need at least masters, if not doctors. So it's a much pressure to actually build your career in, in academia and, and then even some companies say we don't take the law masters anymore and, and it's, it seems this is the new normality the bachelor's degree and as mentioned earlier uh, also the generic skills in my view are more important than before a uh, few last thoughts on this is that working environment and framework conditions continue to change there is digitalization there's communication changes new tools and products. And it seems the digitalization uh, requires also foresters to learn more about these soft skills, digital skills, communication skills. And uh, as earlier on, it seems uh, for me, when the one job requirement was that we have to be able to travel. Uh, but now, <laughs> as we have seen last two years, you need to actually do the same things that you would do in a bigger policy session in New York or in Nairobi or somewhere, virtually. You need to be able to socialize, work as a group, uh, speak up, uh, be diplomatic. This also needs to be done in virtual setting. And this is not what we have been taught in our schools when, when I, was a, I was a forestry student. So lastly, about the trainings and uh, internships and mentoring. I think uh, this is very highly valued by the employers. And as uh, Juliet said, this also was confirmed in the, in, the, in the report and the survey. So 
three thoughts here are that trainings are crucial in my view, whatever kind of trainings. It's the lifelong learning, as we, as we heard before, Juliet, that you always need to build skills up. Maybe not only for us three skills, but different skills are fine. You can go deviate the path, it's fine, in my view. <laughs> Uh, learning from the peers and having short term practice is, uh, is very crucial, but it cannot be built in studies always. And uh, there is a need to help to cover these gaps in the education system. And uh, as I already mentioned, the li lifelong learning of diverse skills uh, makes one more competitive in the job seeking process. Here again, I will just show a few photos <laughs> between the lads before I do my last conclusions. Uh, practical internship, I started in my first bachelor year. I just said, I want to go to the state forest and do a practice. And with my two friends, we were there for three two weeks. So somehow it worked out. Uh, if you have opportunity, all the courses, international bonds courses uh, are very good. Firstly, to learn about things, but also to actually uh, uh, get friends. This is the other point, the contacts, the network. This is, this is key also in my view. Somehow there is some drawing on my screen, but that's fine. Okay. And my first uh, UFRO contact was actually with uh, Forest Week 2013 when I just applied to make a presentation and then they selected me on a side event on forest education in Finland. And from there I started to get into the UFRO more and also to think about future here. So final thoughts from me. First, know your subject field forestry whatever environment and also beyond that um, try to be as diverse as feasible regarding skills and knowledge when applying for a job i think even if you don't have so good background if you are very motivated and very self-confident you will go a long way uh, the persistence is also the key and long-term thinking Things take time. You cannot just overnight become a, a CEO of a company or, or an organization. This takes time, of course. And then I have here a crocodile. This is, well, if I would see that in the nature, if I walk somewhere in the forest, I would be very, very uh, scared and probably not take a photo of it. But you have to always look at the bigger picture because in this case, this crocodile is very safe. It was from a balcony in a Cancun in a restaurant. So they just swim there. And you have to always look at the bigger picture and the context, because this can change everything. And one UFRA president, not the current one, and not maybe the previous one or before that, said that don't wait for the network to come to you, but involve yourself and reach for the network. So use your IFSA contacts. If the contacts uh, are how I ended up in, in UFRO and how I have also been uh, taking all my trainings and study courses during the, during the studies to go abroad. This is all through IPSA. And lastly, this is an excerpt of my CV when I applied for a, for a UFRO position. And I just wanted to show you that I was then 26, male, not married yet, no kids, lived in Estonia, had a phone number and email, student email. In 2022, I'm 34, eight years older. I'm male, I'm still male, <laughs> married, two boys. I live in Vienna and still the same phone, but have a work address in UFRO. So the only things that really are the same are that I'm still male and of course the age you cannot choose. And in my case, I decided not to choose my contact because I think ensuring long-term uh, contact, uh, not changing phone numbers every 10 years is also, in my view, an uh, asset because you need to communicate. People need to reach you. They, you. they need to know when you call them. So concentrate on the things in your life that can be improved. And thank you. And join us for the UFO breakout room. Thank you very much, Mr. Andrew, for imparting your expertise and knowledge on employee expectations. It was uh, very informative for all of us. And if you have any questions, please write it on the chat box. Mr. Andrew uh, can answer them there. 
Once again, thank you very much. It is a pleasure to have you here as a speaker on the IFSA virtual job fair. Thank you. And I think Juliet also, thank you for making an excellent presentation. So. Yeah, thank you both for, for your words during this uh, job fair. Thank you so much. So now for the moment that we have all been waiting for, uh, the networking sessions with our participant organizations, International Union of Forest Research Organization, Young Professionals for Agricultural Development, Forest Europe, Forest Stewardship Council, and of course, Jordan Landscape Initiative. Uh, the breakout rooms have already opened, so feel free to choose which room you would like to join. You can also enter every room if you prefer. And later, let's all meet here at the main room in 45 minutes, which is at 4 uh, 30, if I'm correct, at UTC 0. So everyone, please uh, join to a uh, breakout room. Hi, Jasmine. Can you hear me? I'm struggling to join a breakout room. Why? I'm clicking on the four boxes and all I see are the names of people who've not been assigned breakout rooms. I can, uh, I can assign you. Which room do you want? No, I'm even confused. As when I was registering, because I had to register, I selected Youth in Landscapes Initiative. So I think I can still go there. Okay, I can assign you now. Thank you. Have you received the invitation already? Hello, Jasmine. Can you please assign me to in Youth in Landscape? Yeah, of course I can. You, you've invited me to wipe part. Ah, oh, okay, wait, let me check again, sorry. No problem, take your time. So we'll just decline this one and then, yeah, now it's you, thank you. Anyone else need help to assign you to the breakout room? Yes, yes ma'am. Can you please assign me to white part? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, hi, Samuel. Uh, which room do you want hi, to go just to uh, Sorry, who was talking? Please assign me to the- I was saying, could you please assign me any- Could you please state your name before uh, speaking so we can assign you? Sorry about that. Yes, please. Or you could just write in the chat if you're unable to, um, to talk. My name, my name is Ongom Crispus. Can you please- uh, Assign me to use in landscape. Thank you. Okay. Someone else need help? Oh, the guy. <laughs> okay, I can I assign you this. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Maria Agnet, Nikita, Jennifer, Stella, Manov, Neha, Shuda, you need help? I can just assign them to a room now. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think. They can just 
move to other rooms after. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay now. Okay. For those who are still in the main room, can you please do the breakout room we assign you? <laughs> 